Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is, um, a lot of people uh, requested this tutorial, so we're going to do it. This is how to make a sword forge, and there's a couple of reasons why we do this. If you want to make long-bladed weapons, swords, and things like that, you need to have something other than a normal forge not so much for the actual shaping of the weapon but for the heat treatment of it the hardening and tempering of the steel which you can't do in a normal forge and I show you there you've been taking a look there at the little paddles I got to help control the airflow Oh, and if you're not really into the blacksmithing stuff, you're more into my arts and crafts stuff, you still might want to watch this video because to show you how to make this, rather than make another forge, I made a little one here with arts and crafts supplies showing you step by step. So this is what we're going to use this here, step by step, how to make a sword forge, just a little, using this little model. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you out of real creation. StormTheCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, first off, let's take a look at the reasons why we make a sword forge. With a regular forge, you have something called the fire pot. That's where the temperature gets really hot in that small circular area where you can heat up the steel to 2,000 degrees, roughly, depending on what you want to do, and then work on it. And for a sword, that's quite okay, because you work on it in sections, like this. See, I'm only working part of this sword, and then you heat it, you heat another part, and you work on that part of the sword. So a forge with a circular fire pot is quite fine for that. But, when it comes time to heat treating the sword, hardening and tempering it, you have to heat the whole thing either to around 1500 degrees to harden it or 500 degrees to temper it and you can't really get that done in a small circular fire pot. You need a long fire pot, something that will heat the whole blade of the sword evenly. Let's take a look here, see like this. I'm currently heating this sword blade here in the sword forge and you see how I got maybe two feet there getting nice and hot? And this sword actually needs another, another foot to get hot, but you get the idea of what I'm saying here. We've got that long line of very hot, and it doesn't have to be as hot as your normal forge. We only need to get it up to about 1,500 degrees for hardening. So let's do it. And now we'll break out the little model that I built here so I didn't have to build actually another forge. But this is, picture this as a 55 gallon drum that you cut longitudinally like this and you may have to cut those out depending on the size of the sword you make. But, and, and then added some legs to and then I added some legs to it. And, and this is just to give you the concept and idea of what you need to do and you can improvise all kinds of things. See in here on the actual sword forge for the legs I used um, angle iron. But one important thing is never use any kind of galvanized steel in this. No, absolutely not because it gives off a toxic gas. So no galvanized steel anywhere in your sword forge. So now the toyer. This is where the airflow goes all the way through. And that's it's just not connected pipes. They're actually open inside so the air will flow throughout the whole T. And this is this airflow is important because it heats up the coal or the hardwood lump charcoal to a higher temperature so we can get the steel up to temperature. And then I drilled holes in the top of that toyer like this and start out with holes maybe about every three inches, every two to three inches. So you can test it first for airflow. You can always add more holes to your forge as you go and you try it and you see how it works and see how the air is distributed and if you get a nice even flow. And then from there, um, add a bunch of refract, a layer of refractory bricks. See that? There's the refractory bricks. Those are special high temperature bricks that you can buy in like a place that sells wood stoves. But fill the inside of that drum with them. It will um, protect the forge and will also raise the temperature inside the forge. And then you put a screen on it. And that's it. You can start forging swords, just like my little miniature sword there. But now the paddles, you're probably curious about, the, you're, you're definitely curious about the paddles. And the paddles help control the airflow. And particularly you can um, centralize this 
close them off and use the center section there for, to get even hotter temperatures if you need, it, need to. But I like the paddles, they help control the airflow to get an even um, heat. And this is how they work. In that two year, I cut two slots. Picture that large tube I have in my hand, in my right hand, as the toyer. I cut two slots in the right positions and then made this with um, a steel rod and a piece of a round cut piece of steel so you can do this. See? And see how that will, you can open and close it now. Simple as that. And then close up those slots by welding something over them. Or you can just weld a small piece so you can still rotate the rod and then put the slots down, facing down in the uh, forge and that would be quite okay. But there you go, one paddle there and one paddle there. Fun. See we have our little forge there. So now uh, we're pretty much done. Uh, let's take a look. So you can adjust those paddles. So that's it. You have made a sword forge. Let's see it in action. It's all ready. We add some coal or some hardwood lump charcoal. Get the fire going. Add a blower. And this blower um, I bought online on Amazon, and it also has a, um, a setting on it so you can actually open and close it for more or less air. And get that forge going. Let's heat up a sword. So now one more look at this, how it is like this, and you can see we have now a long line of very hot, rather than a circular fire pot. We have a, uh, a long straight line of a fire pot, and that way we can heat up the whole uh, sword like that. See, that's looking pretty good. And then for hardening and tempering, you know, you can heat up the whole, whole blade of the sword to the temperature required, and then you can quench it. So, and I have tutorials on how to do this. And, and here on my YouTube channel, I have, you know, 50 blacksmithing tutorials and all kinds of stuff. My knife making and sword making stuff is very popular. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.